Hello, this is Professor Sanyal. In this video, I'm going to show how to build decision tree models and how to evaluate those models. I'm running uh, a RapidMiner Studio uh, 7.6 on uh, Windows 7 PC. If you are not familiar with RapidMiner or how to use RapidMiner, then you may watch my first video, uh, uh, which is a tutorial introducing RapidMiner and the interface of RapidMiner and how to build processes in RapidMiner. Okay, so in this video, we will build a decision tree model using a data set, which is called the heart attack data set. And I'll show you what this data set uh, or what data this data set has. So this has uh, data on 138 individuals from a company's uh, medical claims database. And the company has collected data on the age of the people, marital status, gender, weight, categories, uh, cholesterol levels, stress management, trait anxiety, and so on. But what is common to all these individuals is that they all have had a heart attack. And some of them have had a second heart attack and some of them didn't. So our goal in this exercise will be to build a decision tree model that can predict who uh, might have a second heart attack. In other words, we'll use this data set of 138 individuals, the labeled data set of 138 individuals, to create a predictive model that can predict whether someone who has had a heart attack will go on to have a second heart attack or no, not. So if we look a uh, uh, little more closely at this data set, we'll see that the age is uh, 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 ranges from 48, 42 to 81 years. Marital status is coded as, although these are all um, nominal variables, uh, they, are co they are in this data set, they have been treated as um, integers. Um, the marital status zero indicates single, one indicates uh, married, two divorced and three is widowed. Gender, again, is in this data set, it has, we are treating it as a gender or as an integer. Ideally, we should treat it as a nominal variable, but in this case, zero implies female and one implies male. Weight category has three types, zero, one, and two. Zero implies um, normal, one overweight, and two indicates obese. Cholesterol level is a continuous variable. Stress management indicates whether this person participated or attended a stress management course. One, if they did. Zero, if they didn't. Trait anxiety is a score on a scale of zero to 100, measuring the level of each person's natural stress levels and abilities to cope with stress. And this is our dependent variable or target variable, which is the second heart attack. And this is a nice balanced data set. Half of the people had a second heart attack indicated by yes, and approximately half did not have a second heart attack. Okay, so let's go to the design and start building the process. So first we bring the data set over here and we are going to use all the variables other than the target variable as dependent as independent variables. So we don't have to um, eliminate any variable or exclude any variable. So then we use the set role operator to tell rapid minor, which is our target variable. So set role, our target variable in this example is going to be second heart attack, and that is our label variable. So we indicate rapid minor, we indicate to rapid minor that second heart attack is our dependent variable. Next, we uh, build, we, we partition the data set so that we can evaluate the model. So to partition the data set, we use split uh, split data operator. There are other ways uh, uh, to do the validation. For example, RapidMiner provides some validation operators as well. But to keep it simple, we'll just use the split data to split the data into data set into two parts. One we'll use for building the model and the other will keep it for testing the 
model. So in split data, we have to, we can we can create the two partitions. So we can create two third, one third, but again we'll just create 70% and 30%. So one partition for 70%, the other partition with 30% of the data. Now in here we can create as many partitions as we want, but by mistake if we add one more line in here and then um, do not add any partitions then and we say okay then rapid miner might complain later uh, because it won't find anything in this partition so if we create a partition if we hit add entry by mistake we can always say remove entry and remove that partition so we have two clean partitions one with 70 percent and one with 30 percent okay now we need the decision tree operator. Decision trees are quite versatile methods that can be used for regression problems as well as classification problems. The decision tree when they are used for classification problems are also referred to as classification trees. So we are going to use this uh, for a classification problem. We are using this as for a classification problem because our target variable second heart attack is, a bin is binary. That is whether someone had a second heart attack or not. Yes, no. So it's a classification problem. Um, and therefore the tree that we are building is a classification tree. However, decision trees can be used for for continuous uh, dependent variables also. Okay, so here is our decision tree. Decision tree has um, many parameters. What is the leaf size? What is the depth of the tree? That is how far do we want to build the tree? Um, what is the size of each leaf? If you know the theory of decision trees, then you know that the leaves are the, the, are the classifications um and and we can we can specify the size of the leaf that is the if the size of the leaf is too small then we have a problem we might have a problem of overfitting that means we are creating a separate rule although very few of the records um conform to that rule so um, so there are pros and cons of what the size of the leaf should be, what the depth of the tree should be, but we are, for the time being, we are keeping these values at their default values. There are ways to optimize these values. RapidMiner offers an operator which can be used to optimize the values of these um, features or parameters in such a way that the accuracy of the model is uh, maximized. Similarly, this criterion uh, has gains ratio, Gini index, information gain, which is also referred to as entropy. And these, so again, to quickly uh, mention a little bit about the theory of decision trees. So decision trees are built by recursive partitioning, a process called recursive partitioning that is by um, continuous splitting of the of the data set. And there are there are metrics that can be used to figure out what is a better split. And some of those metrics are Gini index, entropy, etc., which tells us how similar two records are or how dissimilar a set of records are, and so on. So in rapid minor, gains ratio is used as the default. However, we can always change it to something other than gains ratio and see if that changes the tree in any way. Okay, now, so we put the our top partition. So when we partition the data, the, there uh, we created two partitions. So the top partition has 70% of the data, which we are going to use to build the decision tree. And the other 30% of the data, which will come from this uh, bottom port, the bottom output port, we are going to use that uh, data for testing and we have to apply the model so that operator is called the apply model operator so we are going to put the apply model operator the apply model requires two input one is the model and the other is the unlabeled data so in other words apply model takes the unlabeled data and applies the model on it to find out the 
missing labels for the unlabeled data or in other words to find the predictions for the unlabeled data now in our case the 30 percent of the data coming from the split data this is not strictly speaking this is not unlabeled because this is coming from the data set where all the 138 records are labeled but apply model is going to pretend as if this uh, 30 percent of the data is unlabeled that is the outcome is not known and it is going to apply the model um, to create the labels and where is the model going to come from the model is going to come from the output port of the decision tree operator and here we put the output of the decision tree operator to the input model input port of the apply model so to repeat apply model applies the model which is generated by the decision tree operator on the unlabeled data in this case the unlabeled data is really the 30% uh, of the data that we set aside using the split data operator so um, okay so that's apply model and we have one more thing left which is to use a performance operator that can be used to perf to to evaluate the model that we are building and we can use the classification performance operator since we, this is a classification problem that is we are trying to classify individuals into two groups whether they will have a second heart attack whether they won't have a second heart attack so we can use the performance classification performance operator and classification performance operator has one mandatory input which is as you can see it is colored in red which means that it expects a mandatory input and that input is the label data which comes from the output of the apply model um, so that's the performance operator if we look uh, at the parameters for the performance we see that the first uh, main criterion is the first one which is accuracy which is fine there are other things over here um, so uh, if you are interested in any of these other uh, metrics you can check those boxes but the classification performance operator generates the classification metrics or the confusion metrics from which we can calculate the precision recall sensitivity specificity and all those other things now so we are almost done we also want to look at the decision tree model that is the tree and to look at the tree we have to put this model output also in the result so we are going to get two things in the result one is the performance which is the classification matrix and the other is the decision tree which comes from the model output port okay so we are all set to run the decision tree and let's go ahead and run by clicking this uh, blue button over here so here is our tree um, and as you might already know that the tree in a decision tree uh, the, uh, by the process of recursive partitioning the tree was created in such a way that the best predictors uh, automatically bubble to the top of the tree so to quickly go over the tree this is referred to as the root node and the ones that you see in blue or red these are the um, leaves of the tree so the root node is always the best predictor um, out of the all the predictor variables that we used in this um, uh, example so weight category happens to be the best predictor followed by cholesterol age and so on so weight category to interpret the tree you can see the weight category if it is greater than 1.5 then the people have been classified as yes that is they are going to have a second heart attack if it is less than 1.5 then um, we have to look at the cholesterol levels and then if the cholesterol level is less than 234 then we have to look at the age of the individuals and so on now rapid minor provides the tree and sometimes the tree can be a little unwieldy so we might want to move the tree now there are two icons there's zoom out and zoom in icons over here now if we click that left icon then that we are allowed to move the tree together that is the entire tree whereas if we 
push the right icon that enables us to move the individual nodes if we want to make it a uh, little easier to follow or um, okay and in addition to the graph that is this tree which uh, rapid miner is calling graph of the tree rapid miner also provides a description of the tree which we can see over here so as you can see at the top the root node is weight category which um, which is the root node and it has 24 individuals who are categorized as yes and zero individuals as no if we go back to the uh, excuse me if we go back to the graph of the tree you'll see that this is blue because the people in here are are, are all um, categorized as those who will who will have a second heart attack so you can see 24 yeses and um, zero noes and these are mostly the ones which are actually all of them there are um, zero yeses and 32 noes so the people the leaves containing people who will not have a heart attack or second heart attack are colored red and those who and the leaves that contain people who will have a second heart attack or predicted to have a second heart attack they are colored as uh, blue and you will also see that there are um, nodes where there is one yes and one no and these have been um, classified as a yes there may be other nodes where they where it is not completely pure so these are called if there is if the nodes or if the leaves have only one type of one class of individuals then that's referred to as a pure leaf whereas these are not pure but um, uh, rapid miner is using some tie breaking um, schemes to classify these two individuals as yes although there is equal number of yes and no one yes and one no anyway so that's so far as the tree is concerned now let's look at how good the model is the model accuracy over here so this is the classification metrics the model is uh, not bad at all the overall accuracy is 95 percent which is made up of the weighted um, accuracies of the yes class and the no class so the weighted average of the yes class and the no class the yes class accuracy is 95 percent and the no class accuracy is 95.24 percent and so this is a this is a, a nice model where the accuracies of the each class that is the sensitivity and the specificity of the model are almost the same which is again the same as the overall accuracy but there can be many cases where the um overall ac where the accuracy of one class is not the same as the or at even not similar to the accuracy of the other class so that was um a, a, an, an exercise on how to build a decision tree and how to evaluate a decision tree using a classification matrix thank you so much for watching